Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kerry and I love all things beauty and makeup related. Today I have got a lot of makeup regrets sat in front of me and I've pulled quite a lot of things from my collection in a lot of different categories and it's actually quite sad to see how many regrets I do have. We're going to whittle our way through them. Like I say, it's not just eyeshadow palettes, there's quite a few different types of things here. It's probably not all of the regrets, but it's the ones I can fit on my table and... I'm going to stop here trying to look through my collection because at this point this video could be very long. Okay, I'm going to start off with an eye primer that I really regret buying. This is quite a height eye primer. I'd just like to add a little disclaimer. If you can hear little bells in the background, it's just my kitten that likes to wander around my beauty room while I'm filming. But this eye primer, so, so hyped. So many people love it. It is not for me. Absolutely not. It is the MAC Paint Pot. I know, I know, so many people love it, so many people rave about it, but I do not have oily eyelids like a lot of people suffer from. Mine are on the drier side. It's not like peeling off, flaking, dry crustiness, but they just don't get oily like a lot of other people do, so I find this extremely drying. I have this in soft ochre, and I have worn it a few times, and I've tried it, and I mean, eyeshadow does pack onto it okay, like I don't think it's a bad primer, I just don't think it fits well with my eyes because my eyes are already on the drier side and this dries them out even more. Liner palette. I love to use water activated liner, I think it adds a nice graphic look when you're doing an eyeshadow look and I thought, I know, this is on Beauty Bay, it was fairly, fairly affordable, this is the Makeup Revolution little palette, it's called the Pastel Dream and I thought, oh I don't have pastel liners. That would be amazing. They are rubbish. Okay, I don't know if it's because as well, I've been very spoiled with the Artitude Cosmetics liners. They are my favorite water activated liners. They are opaque, they don't crack, they just go on like a dream. These are very watery, not opaque. I, I just, I wouldn't bother guys. I wouldn't, even the little brush that comes with it. It's not ideal for doing liner with. I just don't like anything about this product. It even feels cheap and tacky, the packaging, and it's a waste of money. Another liner I'm not thrilled with is the High Viz liner from Barry M. It's the liquid eyeliner. I've got one example here. I think I have more colours. But I've got the pink one here, and I never reach for them. It's not like the horrific, they're not as bad as the water activated makeup revolution, but like you can see, there is some pigment. I've just put a little line on my hand. There is definitely some pigment, but I just don't reach for them. I just, I much prefer, if I'm going to use something like this, to use water activated liners, something like that. I just, they're not bad for the price. Some people might like them. I, I just don't think they're as opaque as I want. And I like to use a brush that I've chosen to apply. So I just, it's not my favourite, but it's not horrible. Then we've got a liquid eyeshadow. Now I don't tend to buy a lot of liquid eyeshadows just because I I would only really use them to l use as a liner or something like that because I do have quite a hood in my eyes. So if I put anything fully over the lid, it is going to crack, crease, break up. So I, I don't tend to buy a lot, but I did get some sample beauty ones. This one is in pink. Randomly again, pink. Like I do have more than just this shade, but this is just an example. This is in, what is this in? Virtue. And I thought these look super cute. They come in nice lots of different colours. Uh, again, I don't reach for them. I don't think they're the best in the world as as far as liquid eyeshadows go. I mean, they are on the more affordable side, but it's, it's very, very sticky. It is opaque and they are bright and colourful. I just, I don't reach for them. I really like, if I'm going to use something like this, the P. Louise bases. Again, maybe this one's more of a preference thing rather than a bad quality thing, but it's definitely a makeup regret of mine. I have two foundations, no, I tell a lie, I have three foundations in front of me that are, two are major regrets, one is more of a, yeah, okay, I regret it. So we'll start with the one that isn't as bad as the other two. This is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Glow Foundation. This is in the shade F6. And at the time when I was getting into makeup, I felt like because I have more of a drier skin, I thought I had to have glowy things, dewy things. I have since discovered soft matte works really well on my skin. Not full matte, but soft matte works really, really nicely. Um, it's not too drying on me and I don't feel like I have to stick a load of powder on top of it, which then defeats the object of it being a glowy, dewy foundation. But this one, this one is just extremely 
thick cake facey foundation and I don't enjoy it and I have to use a lot of powder with it and by the time I've caked this on then caked a load of powder on I mean I've got quite a thick layer of makeup on at that point um, I feel like the packaging of this is really nice I can see what they're trying to do but I I don't want to be packing on the foundation and it's it's not my favorite for my skin okay the other two foundations I absolutely hate hate loathe like bad the first one is the Zara limitless soft matte foundation and i'm thinking soft matte that's what i like and it's in this bit of a wonky packaging like if you stand it, it it's sort of on a wonk um and i quite like the packaging i like that they brought out a foundation i just absolutely hate this foundation on my face i do have a testing video for this foundation and it looked like i had crocodile skin that's how drying it was on my skin this isn't a soft matte this is a dry 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 matte like you've been in the desert for quite a while and you're very dehydrated and you're knocking on a bit. Now the colour match wasn't the best for me, but that's not why I'm saying it's a regret. I wouldn't even buy this in another colour. This is just horrific on my skin. If you have a similar skin type to me, I have some fine lines. I have very dry skin. I mean, I do keep on top of it with skincare, but it is on the drier side. This, this is just a no. And then another foundation that I absolutely hate that also did make me resemble a crocodile is the KVD Good Apple Foundation. I'm actually going to give this to my friend. She said that she actually wants it. She can have it. I do not need it in my collection. It is in Light 006 and the packaging's super nice. It's just like plastic and obviously it's more of a balmy one and people were saying, oh yeah, it's going to be great for dry skin. It's not great for dry skin. I absolutely hate this. This looked awful on me. I do believe I have a testing video of this one as well. Like... This is quite an oldish one now. I really, really dislike it. Same reasons as the Zara one, to be honest. Then we're going to go on to lip products. I do have four lip products in front of me. The first one being, I can't even see a name on this. I think it says Shine Loud. It's very difficult to read in this colour, but it's the NYX Shine Loud and it's got the liquid lipstick on one side and it's got the lip gloss on the other. The idea of this, fantastic, and I did buy this in quite a few colours. I like the gloss. The gloss is beautiful. It's not sticky. It goes on really, really nice. The problem for me is the liquid lipstick. So it's supposed to be a really matte liquid lipstick that's not going to budge, but then you can put the gloss on top to make it shiny. And the only thing that's supposed to transfer and come off, say if you was to have a drink of coffee, is the gloss. And I would say, yes, that it does work like that. But applying the liquid lipstick, don't put your lips together or leave it a long time before you put the liquid, the lip gloss on because I had to prise my lips apart you know when you've put some liquid lipstick on and then you rub your lips together yeah they stick like like no other it's just not my favorite formula of liquid lipstick and I don't really think it's worth it to have to go through the hassle of the liquid lipstick and then the gloss keeps coming off and you have to reapply it I just it, it was good in theory in practice not so much and I'd never tried the Maybelline Vivid Matte Liquid Lipstick. And I thought I'll give it a go because I found it in a colour that I really, really liked. This is what it looks like. And it is in a beautiful colour. What is this actually in? Does it tell me? It is in Orange Shot. And if you know me and you've been on my channel, you know I love an orange lip. The formula of this I just don't like. It's very thin. And I feel like I have to build it up. And I just, I don't know. There's just something about it. I just don't like it. Some people might love this formula, but not me. Then XX Revolution came out with a Matrix collection. I was overjoyed and I did pick up one of the palettes, which I really did like. I think it was the Trinity palette. And I picked up the Lip Duo because in the Lip Duo was a green liquid lipstick. And if I love anything, it is a funky colour lipstick. So I thought I don't have a green that colour. I'm so excited to try it. So I bought the two of them. And unfortunately, this formula is not comfortable. It's like kind of like cement, like it does stay, but then it's really difficult to remove and it feels a bit, like you can definitely feel it on your lips. It's very tacky, thick. Yeah, I just really, really dislike the formula of this. The colour of it is beautiful, but the formula, no. Again, we have another formula issue and it is with Makeup Revolution and the Coraline collection, which I reviewed very recently. And this is the duo lipstick. So you do have a nice nude on one side and you do have a black on the other side. I think it's the other mother. That's what it's called. Um, liquid lipstick duo. And I tested the nude side first and I was quite impressed and I liked it. Tested the black. It's one of the worst blacks I've tried. It applied and then it was trying to come off and then I tried to reapply it. It was cracking absolutely horrific and I love the things in that Coraline collection from Makeup Revolution but I do not recommend this. This is terrible as a black lipstick. 
I, I don't actually know how many palettes I've got in front of me that are regrets. Um, I'm going to be doing a palette collection video very soon with maybe a tiny declutter within that. And I think the majority, if not all, of these palettes may be included in that declutter. I, I'm not 100% sure because I do like to collect and hoard, especially eyeshadow palettes. It's just what I like to collect. So I don't know how many is actually going to make it out of my collection, but I feel like maybe quite a few of these ones. So the first one I haven't even tried, and that's why I regret it, and this is the Bright Lights by Pinky Rose Cosmetics. This is, it's actually sliding out, this is the outer packaging, and I was really excited to give this a go. Me and my friend both bought it, and then we realised it's got three pressed glitters. Like, I hate pressed glitters at the best of times, and this has got three, and it's that chunky, horrible type of pressed glitter. This is what it looks like, and you can see why I wanted to buy it, and why I like the colour story. But yeah, I was thinking those pressed glitters were shimmers, which means then if I'm not using those, it's an all matte palette for me, apart from a two shades, sort of satiny, I can't even really tell. But I just feel like it's a bit of a rainbow palette with three, three pressed glitters, so I haven't even tried this. So I'm tempted to declutter it, but on the other hand, maybe I should try it because I haven't. But that's why it's a regret, because it's been sat in my collection for quite a while now, and I haven't touched it. What do you think? Do you think I should declutter it or do you think I should try it? Then we've got a little palette from e.l.f. This is the Cookies and Dreams palette. I actually thought I was going to really love this and I never reached for it. I used it for a video. It is on the cheaper side and when they released this little collection of Cookies and Dreams I thought, oh that's so super cute. I do like browns and blues together. It's not what I reach for all the time but what a cute little companion travel type of palette. I don't reach for it. I wasn't blown away by the formula. It just adds nothing to my collection. Then we've got an I Heart Revolution Chocolate Chip Cookie Shadow Palette and it's this one and I'm um, okay. The packaging is what drew me in and it's squishy on the top. So I did do a video with the birthday cake. Was it birthday cookie or birthday cake cookie? I did do a video on that. I can't remember if I used this but looking at it, the colour, sorry, I mean it's got a little mirror inside. The packaging's cute. But the actual colour story is definitely not me, really, so I'm not actually quite sure why I bought it. I feel like it's got two mattes, because the others look like shimmers, but they're that lacklustre, they, they could pass for a matte. It's got two mattes, and the matte is a real light one here, and it is this sort of mustardy one here, which isn't too bad, and maybe I went for it because it's got greens as well. I, I don't reach for this. I do not reach for this. It is a regret. Then we've got some She Glam. This is the Flutter Effect palette from She Glam. Look at the packaging of this. So, so pretty. She Glam are very affordable and they are on Sheen. And I do believe they have their own website as well. And this is a bit dirty inside. I have swatched it and I have used it. The colour story is beautiful. It's what I'd normally typically go for in a colour story. However, guys, the formula. I really do not enjoy this. The shimmers are so lacklustre. I have, like, it adds nothing to my collection. I have Makeup Revolution shimmers that are 10 times better than this, and the mattes aren't anything to write home about. Oh, we have another e.l.f. palette. I, I forgot that I added two to this pile. This is the e.l.f. Retro Paradise palette. I remember reviewing this, um, so I do have a video on it, and I was impressed with it at the time. However, I've come on in my makeup journey since then, and I feel like the quality of this and the cool story isn't as amazing as I once thought it was, but isn't that the case with everything? Hindsight, and then when you move on and your tastes change, and I mean, it's not the worst colour story. I think it looks more exciting because it's on an orange background. It is very, very cheap, plasticky packaging. Um, it's not the worst, but it's not the best. Yeah, formula-wise, it's just, it's not up there compared to so many of my other palettes. And the colour story, I mean, I'm not excited by this now. Okay, I really regret buying the next palette. And this is the Made by Mitchell Milk palette. I resisted this at launch. I was really, really good. And then there was an offer. And I think I got it for half price or less than half price. Thank goodness, because I really do regret this. And I thought, do you know, as much as it's got neutrals in it, it does have a lot of colour. And I like cow themed things. I thought it looked funky and fun and different. And I do collect a lot of Mitchell eyeshadows. However, there are a lot of neutrals in this and this deep blue here is one of the patchiest deep blues that I have ever used. I do have a video using this where you will see the struggle I have with this and no matter how much I pack it on, more and more comes off. So I just feel like for the full retail price of this, what Mitchell was selling it for with a blue shade like that in it, it's just really put me off using it. Okay, 
I know what Heather is going to be thinking right now. Kerry, why did you buy that? I know, I know. Okay, the reason I bought it is because I love cheese. And I bought the both of the I Heart Revolution, the Big Cheese and the Mini Cheese eyeshadow palettes. I do have videos on these. Now look, stop judging me because I knew it wasn't going to be the best quality in my collection. I was aware of that. I was fine with that. But the packaging, like packaging can suck at me in. I really, really need to watch myself with that. But cheese, like some people are going to think that's ridiculous and hate this type of packaging. For me, I think it's quite quirky and I like it. The colour story is bright and vibrant considering, you know, it's cheese. It doesn't really scream cheese to me. And this blue shade isn't even called blue cheese. There's another one called blue cheese that's actually yellow. So a bit weird. Um, it's not the most cohesive cool story and it doesn't scream cheese at me, to be honest. I don't like the pan sizes or shapes. And some of the quality was good. It's a bit hit and miss with I Heart Revolution sometimes. And I definitely say the formulas in this palette, some are better than others. And the mini cheese, which is flipping adorable. I'm sorry, but it is adorable. I do love the packaging of this and the way that it flips up like a little, little cheese. Um, I actually prefer the quality of this one to the bigger palette, but the colour story for me, when am I going to really be reaching for this? I suppose you could chuck it in your bag if you was actually off away somewhere, something like that. Um, I'm tempted to keep this one more than I am the big cheese. Then we've got another I Heart Revolution, and this one is the Tasty Pineapple Palette. I did review this, and as much as I regret buying this now... I prefer this over the cheese palettes. I think it is better quality and I much prefer the colour story. Why can I not get into it? I feel like for summer, for a nice tropically look, yeah, there's only one sort of deeper shade here, which is this dark brown here. And I don't really reach for dark browns, especially as deepening shades I try and stay away from. Browns, some of the mattes are better than others. And the shimmers on the whole in this palette were actually quite nice. Are they anything spectacular that's going to blow your socks off. Not really. It's a nice palette, but thinking about it now, would I buy it again if I didn't have it and saw it released? Probably not. This is one I've had in my collection for quite a long time and I did do a review on this. And this is the Totemic palette from Unicorn Cosmetics. I really wanted to try the brand and I thought, wow, look at the artwork on this packaging. It's absolutely stunning. And the cool story inside when I was just getting into makeup, I was like, ooh, that's bright, colourful, vibrant. I like that. But actually in person and using them, I don't think the mattes are anything to write home about. I did struggle with blending out shades and even just blending the mattes out on their own. I don't think the shimmers are spectacular in this palette whatsoever. They're very, very bog standard apart from this one, which is Toucan, which is a bit more of a special shade. But should I just keep the palette for that one shade that I really like? Like, I've held on to it all this time and I don't know if it's going to survive the declutter. Okay, this one really pains me to put in this video because I'm half and half about it. Half of me loves it because of the packaging and the colour story. The other half of me doesn't love it because of the quality of the shadows. And I know this brand can do so much better. But we've got the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette and it's not just me that felt a little bit sad with this one. I mean, the packaging of this, stunning. And the fact that it's magnetic and you can fully take the lid off. It's got a mirror on this side, but I don't want to blind you. And the colour story of this palette is so beautiful. We've got pastels and grunginess and it's just delicious, which is why I wanted it. But the actual powderiness and the way that the shadows apply is not the best. And I was on a FaceTime call with my friend while she was using this because she was trying to explain to me how bad it was and how patchy and as much as she packed on it kept coming off a bit like the milk palette from Mitchell with me with that blue um, and yeah I could see she was showing me on the camera that it just literally wouldn't pack on so I'm a little bit disappointed the shimmers aren't my absolute favourite in this um, I do prefer this shimmer out of the palette I feel like that's a little bit more opaque these are more toppery shades and not as special but the colour story in the packaging 10 out of 10 I'm probably not going to declutter it though because it's Kaleidos and I love them. Then we've got XX Revolution XNV eyeshadow palette. Obviously I bought this because it's greens, okay? And they are on the more affordable side, although XX Revolution is slightly more expensive than the other Revolution sister brands, but I did reach for this a few times when I first got it, but I just think the colour story overall now, I don't really reach for it. If I need greens, I've got so many beautiful pigmented blendable good quality shadows that just beats this hands down every flipping time and it's nice for an affordable option or for someone that just wants more greens in their collection or is just starting out with makeup but for me personally looking at the rest of the things I've got in my collection this just feels a bit redundant to me now. 
exactly the same reasons for the next palette and that's another XX Revolution. This is the Extravaganza Shadow Palette and it's absolutely humongous and I, I don't tend to like to collect huge palettes anymore. When I first got into makeup I liked the bigger palettes the better, now not so much. As you can see it's a giant rainbow palette and I do tend to stay away from buying just rainbow palettes because I went through a phase, like I say, when I first got into makeup of just buying rainbow palettes and I've stopped doing that now and although this is nice and it's actually, you know, fairly good quality, I just, I don't dig this out and reach for it. If I was going to use a big rainbow palette like this, I would be reaching for my Carnival Love Tahiti. Okay, I'm not sure why I bought this one. Thinking back at the time, I remember umming and ahhing about it. This is the Be Perfect Cosmetics Dream Big Manifest Palette. This is what the outer packaging looks like, very holographic and crazy, and on the inside, this is the colour story. Some people love this palette. I remember speaking to some of my friends and they said they love the colour story, the formula and everything. I thought I was going to love it, but seeing it in person, it doesn't inspire me. I'm, I'm not really judging it on the quality of this one, it's more the colour story, and maybe it is because it's on the bigger side of the palettes that I've got in my collection now, and looking at it, yeah, it's super pretty, but it's very... There is quite a few neutrals and it's on the deeper side and it's sort of, I don't know, it just doesn't speak to me. It doesn't speak to me. Okay, I bought the next one when I was getting into makeup and I didn't really know what I was doing. That is my defence. And it is the Morphe Jacqueline Hill palette, the original. Obviously this is just the plain packaging of the front. And then on the inside, we all probably know what she looks like, but this is the newer formula that they did. So apparently it's not as good as the original formula of the palettes that she brought out, which I wasn't aware of at the time. But I've, I was watching people on YouTube and lots of people at the time were still loving this and using it. And I'm like, oh, I might like it then. How often have I reached for this palette? Like, it looks almost brand new, to be fair. And it's, it's, it's full of neutrals. And if I was going to reach for neutrals, it wouldn't be Morphe neutrals. Morphe isn't my favourite formula. The next one I did buy off one of my friends, um, so it wasn't brand new. It, it was one of those unicorn type palettes that you couldn't get hold of at the time, but a lot of people were saying it was bad quality and for some reason I decided to get it anyway. It's the 35i Icy Fantasy Morphe palette. Packaging is stunning for a pastel palette and when we can get her open, on the inside this is the colour story and I am a sucker for a pastel palette and it is obviously beautiful. However, the only good thing about this palette is the shimmers. The mattes are barely there, barely there is what I'd say and I don't know if this is going to survive a declutter. We are on to the last one guys, thank you for sticking with me. We have got the Lime Crime Venus XL2 which a lot of people might be shocked about because the packaging is lovely. The colour story is very, very nice. Although it's got a lot of neutrals in it, it's on the greeny side and I really wanted this for the longest time. It does annoy me that this packaging is sort of shiny gold. It, I prefer it if it's not. Colour story, I love it. The reason that it's a regret for me is because it is the most powdery, fallouty formula I have ever used. Like these mattes, if I'm sticking my brush in, there is eyeshadow everywhere and it makes me not want to reach for it which then makes me just put it on my shelf and not use it so yeah it's kind of a regret thank you for joining me for this video guys i hope you found it interesting fun and you got a little peek into some of my collection obviously i will be doing a palette collection soon what do you think about the things i talked about today do you agree with me with any of these things do you disagree with me that's absolutely fine if you do some things are definitely down to preference and such as the foundation, definitely type of skin type. I would be also really interested to know if you could tell me your makeup regrets in the comments and we can have a little chat down there. And thank you for joining me for this video. Like I say, I will have a palette collection coming soon. I, I'm planning it in my mind. I'm working myself up to it because it's going to take me quite a long time. But now I've got my camera, it's in the works. If this is the sort of content that you enjoy, please do consider subscribing. And hopefully, guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.